Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today we're going to be repotting my Alien and Kraken Venus flytraps. The Kraken is mostly just outgrown its small planter. The Alien hasn't quite outgrown its planter, but as you can see we have quite the crowded carnivorous room here. What an absolute beautiful mess we have on our hands. I really hate to tear this apart and repot. There's five different types of carnivorous plants that I've identified just in this planter alone. You have the alien Venus flytrap here, of course. There's also the beautiful yellow and purple Utricularia that's popping up. And there's three different kinds of sundews that I've identified so far. We got the spatulata, which is kind of a flat leaf sundew. We got the binata, which is a fork leaf sundew. And of course, the famous cape sundew or Drosera capensis, which is kind of like the weed of the carnivorous plant kingdom. Those are just the ones I've identified. There may be more, and although this makes for an incredible display, it's really not good for the alien Venus flytrap. The alien is a fairly slow grower, but all these sundews are not. Before long, this planter will be completely overgrown with sundews. I'm gonna try my best to keep this beautiful display intact, minus the alien, but we'll see what happens. I'm gonna show you my process for repotting Venus flytraps. I'm also gonna share with you some beginner Venus flytrap care tips. Keep in mind, if you're in need of in-depth care and repotting videos, I'm gonna share some of those videos with you at the end. Those will give you an even more in-depth guides on care and repotting. So make sure and check those out if you're still interested. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, without being too obvious, the first thing that we're gonna need is a planter. And down are better than these Active Aqua 5x5 wide and seven inch deep plastic planters. It's hard to find planters that are deeper than they are wide. This one goes deeper by a full two inches. It also has some of the best drainage and airflow holes than I've seen out of any of the other planters out there. You've probably seen others using these as they're kind of the gold standard when it comes to Venus flytraps. They can be pretty hard to get because they only sell them in bulk a hundred at a time, but I'm actually selling these in my store now. I sell them in packs of three, five, and 10, making them more accessible for casual hobbyists. You can head on over to my store now if you're interested. There should be a link in and under the description that takes you right over to the planners for sale. You better hurry though, people have been buying these faster than I've been able to keep up with getting more. The next thing you're going to need, which also seems pretty obvious, is the substrate. I actually make my own substrate with high quality ingredients. I also rinse all my ingredients with pure zero water to make sure I get everything rinsed off that doesn't need to be in there. Venus flytraps need a substrate that is lacking in any nutrients or minerals. The minerals and nutrients can burn the roots and kill the plant. This is why they evolved to catch insects. Since the roots are unable to absorb the nutrients that it needs, they develop the trap to catch insects. They release a digestive enzyme, turn them into a soup, and absorb the nutrients it needs through its leaves. I mean, just how incredible is nature sometimes? I use a mix of peat moss, perlite, and crushed glass. The peat moss does a great job absorbing and holding the water so the roots always have access to moisture. The perlite helps keep the soil mix from getting too compact and bricking up. The glass serves a similar purpose, it helps keep the soil aerated and assists in keeping proper drainage. Plus, the glass looks amazing when it's shimmering in the sun. Don't worry, it's not sharp and doesn't hurt your hands. It just feels like coarse sand. If you don't want to fuss with the substrate mix, I'm actually selling mine now. You can click the link in the description, or if you go right below the description, my store is connected to my YouTube channel. You can click through to the products there. You can get the soil by itself, or it comes in a kit with planters that I showed earlier. Once you have your substrate, make sure you get it wet with some distilled rain, reverse osmosis, or filtered pure water. Tap water also contains minerals and nutrients, so the same rules apply for the water as they do for the substrate. You can buy distilled water by the gallon at big box stores like Walmart or Kroger, or you can buy a zero water pitcher and filter your own water. If you wanna learn more about filtering water with a zero pitcher, I have a link in the description with a full video dedicated to showing you how they work and why I believe it's the best accessory for your carnivorous plant collection. Make sure to get your peat moss mix nice and saturated. It'll be much easier to repot your Venus flytrap once the substrate is wet, rather than trying to do it when it's dry. I've tried repotting plants in dry peat moss mixes before, it's not very fun. Make sure to wet it down first. Before you put any substrate into your planter, I recommend putting a small square of paper towel down the bottom. This will help keep any perlite from plugging your drainage holes. It'll also help keep your substrate in contact with the water source, helping wick up water into the planter. All right, now that you have your paper towel down in the bottom, put about an inch worth of substrate into your planter. This bottom inch, I recommend packing it down pretty tight. This will push the substrate down and help keep it in contact with the drainage holes. You're going to want to tray water your Venus flytrap. If your substrate isn't in contact with the holes, it can't wick the water up. It's really important that this bottom layer is pretty packed down. For the rest of the substrate, I make sure to pack it down just enough to avoid any gaps, but not super tight. 
We want the substrate to be fairly light and loose at the top. We want the roots to easily travel down through the planter. The easier the roots can grow down and travel, the bigger and healthier your carnivorous plant will be. I recommend filling the planter up just above the brim. Once we're done, we're going to top water this plant to help settle the substrate. Usually, after it gets done settling, you can use the excess soil to fill in the gaps. You don't want your plant sitting down below the side of your planter. This can block the light or sun from getting to your plant. Okay, the planter is ready. Let's grab the Venus flytraps and get them out of the old planter. Be gentle and patient here. You do not want to rip any roots. Try squeezing the old planter to help free up the old substrate. Once it's freed up, you should be able to pull the plant right out. Keep a jar of water close. If your plant was in peat moss mix previously like these were, the substrate should rinse right off. You can see that the kraken was in peat moss, but they used some long fibrous sphagnum moss at the bottom of the planter. That's the golden looking moss toward the bottom. This can be really tricky to remove from the roots. It becomes tangled and doesn't usually fall off in water like the peat moss mixes. This is one of the reasons I don't like using long fibrous sphagnum moss as my main substrate for Venus flytraps. It also dries out way too fast. Peat moss holds the moisture longer making it a better option, especially during the warm growing season. I'm going to do my best to pull as much of this old moss off as possible, but be very gentle and very patient with this process. I'll probably end up leaving a lot of the moss, as it's more important to avoid ripping the roots than it is to get all the moss off. If the roots are tangled with the moss, don't force the moss off, just leave it. How much of the old substrate that you remove is really up to you. I personally always like to remove as much as possible to help give my plant the best fresh start that I can. If you're repotting a plant that still has fairly fresh soil, keeping some of the old substrate on there should be just fine. Smell the substrate. If it stinks, I'd get rid of it as much as possible. Older substrate can bring in mold, mildew, and even some unwanted critters from the old planter. I think best practice is to probably just clean it off as best as possible. Once it's cleaned off, you'll see the beautiful white rhizome. In some cases, you may even be able to divide your plant at this step and have the ability to repot several Venus flytrap plants. Now that the rhizome is exposed and cleaned off, I like to take this opportunity to clean off any old dead growth that's still attached. Anything black or dead looking can be removed. I like to leave anything that's still green as it can still photosynthesize for the plant. All right, real quick before we plant our freshly removed Venus flytraps, let me show you how you can get your hands on your very own Venus flytrap cultivar. I'm so excited to be teaming up with California carnivores. They're one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery that you fall in love with. On top of that, they have been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter Bug Eater at checkout. That's B-U-G-E-A-T-E-R, Bug Eater. I have links in the description and the pinned comment so you can head on over and pick out the perfect carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and head on back to the video. Once it's cleared up and ready, you should see some really long black roots. Usually, healthy Venus flytraps have long black roots with the very tips showing a tiny bit of white. Many people see the black roots and fear the worst. Don't worry, this is perfectly normal. Once the plant is out, I like to see how long the roots are to help me dig the hole in the planter. You want the roots to go as deep as possible. Use a butter knife, a screwdriver, or even just your finger to dig a hole in the center of your pot as deep as the roots are long. Once the hole is dug, I like to use the butter knife to guide the roots down into the bottom of the hole. The deeper and straighter they go, the better. You want to make sure and bury the plant just over the top of the rhizome. You don't want any of the white rhizome exposed, but you also don't want it to be buried super deep. I like to put a tiny layer of substrate just over the rhizome. If it's too deep, you can expose your plant to crown rot. Keeping it close to the surface allows it to breathe easily, avoiding the dreaded crown rot. There you go, your Venus flytrap is now repotted. The last thing to do here is to top water the plant. Keep in mind, I don't top water my Venus flytraps typically. I always top water right after repotting any plant though. This helps settle the soil around the roots and helps get rid of any gaps or holes. As the soil collapses, you can build it back up to fill any holes. Often, it might sink down exposing the rhizome. If this happens, just add some extra substrate and build it back up over the top. Alright, I'm going to go over some beginner care tips, but real quick before I do that, if you're finding this video helpful, please pour some water on the like button and subscribe to help my channel grow. My dream has always been to start my own carnivorous plant nursery. I've taken the first steps in that process. My store is open and soil and planters are available to buy. You can support my small business by checking the store out. You can also support me for free by liking, subscribing, 
watching the video to the end, or even just commenting. I'm hoping to start selling plants soon, so keep a lookout for that. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with me today. Let's go ahead and get back to the Venus flytrap care tips. Alright, your Venus flytrap is now ready to bask in the sun. Venus flytraps are hardy perennials and love full sun in the growing season, but need a reduced photo period in colder temperatures to go into a dormant stage during the winter. They stay dormant for three to four months, storing energy in their rhizome and getting ready to flourish in the next growing season. If you bought your Venus flytrap from a big box store, I recommend slowly introducing it to the sun. Maybe a couple hours a day to start. Watch for burning. Keep increasing the hours in the sun as the plant can handle it. Keep increasing until your Venus flytrap is in as much as 12 hours of sun a day. They love being outside in the sun. This also puts them in a position to catch insects. If they're outside, rest assured they're going to catch bugs. The combination of insects and full sun is a Venus flytrap's happy place in paradise. This is where they want to be. I like to tray water my Venus flytraps. During the warm growing season, never let them dry out. I keep my tray full all the time. If you see a dry tray, make sure to fill it back up. During the growing season, they almost can't get enough water. As temperatures start to reduce, the substrate will hold on to water longer. You can start to reduce the amount of water they have. When it gets cold, you may not need to provide them water, but once or twice a month. Don't overwater them in the cold temperatures. They are susceptible to crown rot when sitting in really boggy conditions, especially as temperatures and lighting are reduced. If you want to learn more about Venus flytrap care and repotting, there are a couple of videos popping up on the screen now. Go check them out to learn how to become a master Venus flytrap grower. These plants are amazing, but they do go against a lot of common plant care logic. They aren't hard to grow, you just don't know what you don't know sometimes. Don't worry though, I've got you covered. Thank you so much for stopping by today and watching this video and supporting my small business. I appreciate you more than you can ever imagine. I really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye.